Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Bros, and today we're going to be talking about A Sorrowful Woman, written by Gail Godwin. Now, before I go into the summary and analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, um, this work by Gail Godwin is very uh, interesting. It's It's very... Uh, fascinating because um, you know it's 2021 and this is a piece that was published in the 1970s um, so not that long ago but it feels like when I was reading it it feels uh, very dated very you know it kind of feels like something that was written in the 19th century not the 20th century so it, it's quite different um, from what you would expect um, a Sorrowful Woman, it's a very simple short story. Basically what happens is that uh, there's this this young wife. Um, she is a wife and she is a mother. Um, and pretty much she gets married to this man who is, um, he has a full-time job. He's the breadwinner of the household. Uh, he makes all the money and the Sorrowful Woman pretty much stays at home and cleans, cooks, you know, she does the laundry, she takes care of the home. They have a son and, you know, the mother is responsible to bathe, feed, clean, and, and just take care of the son and, and uh, the well-being of the son. And it's it seems like, I mean, this short story, Soft Woman, starts off like a fairy tale and throughout the whole thing, it kind of feels like a fairy tale. Even the ending, which is very horrific and very sad, doesn't. I, when you read it for the first time, the ending doesn't feel so sad, or it does it doesn't feel so horrific. You definitely have to go back um, and really read the sentence a few times to figure out that the sorrowful woman dies at the end. Um, well, the first time I read it, I just literally kept on reading because it just seemed like. It's impossible, but but it is possible. Um, so in the short story, you know, we get introduced to the wife, the the husband, and the son, and it's a happy family. Uh, the mother is feeding them; they're eating; they're it's just normal family things. Now, keep in mind that this family is an upper upper middle class family. I would say the husband makes enough money for them to have an extra room. The husband makes enough money for them to hire a nanny later within the short story because eventually the mother gets tired of the husband and the son and she's like i don't want this life this life has doesn't have enough meaning it doesn't have enough purpose for me and i want a different life um and so the mother just falls into these episodes of depression uh and she retreats to her bedroom and the husband makes like these medicines these drafts uh, for the sorrowful woman to drink and fall asleep. So um, at first, the husband took the chores or he took over the duties, cooking, cleaning, doing all the things pretty easily. Uh, but then eventually they, he hires a nanny to do the job of the mother and the nanny comes in and she does everything a nanny should. She takes care of the son. She, she feeds everybody. She cleans, she cooks. She does, you know the mother's job basically and the mother just pretty much stays in her room reading writing poems writing books um she becomes an intellectual basically uh and eventually she has the mother has the nanny fired and the father he's a little bit upset over this but he just complies uh the father in this work he plays like this this you know superman role where he can come in come in he can do the cleaning he can do the washing he can work full-time um for a full-time job be the breadwinner be everything that the wife needs um and and i mean it's very unusual that you have a man who is perfect i mean that's how i would describe the husband here he's just perfect he does everything that the wife wants him to do um I mean, you could just say it's love or it's just their relationship, but he's just Superman. Um, and I think Gail Godwin does this on and, and like on purpose to kind of like show us that she's trying to make a point here about this woman who existed in the 20th century who felt um, trapped um, in, in 
two titles. The, the title of being a stay-at-home stay mother, of cooking, cleaning, washing on repeat. You know I mean? Um, if you uh, do something over and over again and, and your, your life has no meaning and every day, day in and day out, you're cooking, you're cleaning, you're feeding your, your husband and son, you might feel like you, you have no purpose and life is meaningless because at some point, the sorrowful woman in this work, she might have thought to herself, man, is this life? Is this like, I'm just going to like cook and clean and feed my husband and kid forever and then I'm going to die? So it, it kind of feels like a life without meaning, with no purpose. Uh, and then eventually what happens is um, she just retreats and isolates herself and she doesn't speak to her son. Um, she even gets violent towards her son. She ends up hitting him within the short story. Um, they, they hired the nanny at first, but then they fired the nanny because the mother just, you know, didn't want the nanny anymore. Um, and the husband, you know, he's, he's, he's just trying to be understanding. We're, we're told right away that he's understanding. Um, I mean, there's even several points, there's several scenes within the short story where the husband literally becomes like a, a babysitter for the wife, for the sorrowful woman. Um, I mean, at the beginning of the short story, he brings her upstairs when she feels like she doesn't want to like be a mother or a, a wife anymore. He, the husband brings her upstairs, takes off her clothes, um, and dress her, put, puts on her nightgown, like helps her out of her regular clothes and puts on her nightgown. So that she can go to sleep she felt so depressed and so so meaningless that she couldn't even you know take care of herself for bed so the husband comes in swaps out her clothes and puts their son to sleep and um yeah, put, puts their son to sleep and pretty much does everything um at the end what happens is uh the the sorrowful woman ends up moving to the isolated bedroom that the nanny had uh and she pretty much stays in there and brushes her hair non-stop and and writes poetry and and read books or write books and looks out the window um and then we kind of get something weird where she comes out when the, the 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 husband and son when they're not there she comes out and cooks and cleans and do things like that now toward the end of the short story you think this is good news maybe she's coming out of her depression maybe she's like you know um, finally snapping out of it, but no, not at all. She's just, she, she, it looks like she's coming back, but she doesn't come back. Um, first she started slowly coming back, cooking, cleaning, maybe cooking some bread, making some bread. Uh, and then uh, during the last day of her life, she pretty much cooks this huge feast. Um, and you know, she knits and she does all these things. She does the laundry. She does everything for her husband and, and son. And the husband comes home, the son comes home, they think their mother, the mother, the wife is back because she did all this work. Um, because before that, you know, they were, she wouldn't speak to them. You know, she told them to slide, pick, you know, letters. Um, the son couldn't write, so he just slide pictures underneath the door or, you know, they sent, her food was sent to her, the notes were sent to her. Everything was like either slid under the door or put in front of the door. They just couldn't go in the room and the wife wouldn't even have the husband in the room. She wouldn't have the son in the room. She wouldn't have anything to do with them. Uh, and um, basically at the end, when she does this huge gesture of cleaning, cooking and all that, that jazz, uh, they're thinking that, okay, she's back. Uh, but no, when they go into the room, the, the husband, you know, he can't contain himself because he comes home and he, he finds this this feast waiting for him and his son. You know, they rush to the room. They think mom's back or my wife's back. She's out of her depression. She's out. She's out of her um, state. Um, the husband goes in and he checks her pulse. Uh, he you know um, listens to her heart. Um, and then it, it, there's a line that says he puts his his face in her hair, um, which tell us that. Pretty much, he 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 tried to he checked um, his wife's pulse, and there was nothing there, and she's dead. Uh, we're not really given we're not given details on how she died, 
Uh, but since she was in the house alone, you know, um, she concocted something to kill herself. And um, it's because of her depression and how her life had no meaning. And, you know, she just didn't want to be the mother. And she was just tired of being the mother and, 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 and wife. Um, so she ends her life. And the son is completely, you know, he doesn't understand what's going on. The husband understands it. Um, and really, the what Gail Godwin does here, she kind of like keeps us in the dark because the the ending scene, there's no screaming or crying or anything like that. It's kind of like a very quiet line, you know, something like I'm paraphrasing here, but like it's like the husband, you know, played in her wrist or played with her wrist and and put his ear to her. Um, to her breast and, and listen and put his face in her hair. He like she uses words like that, and when you're reading these words, it kind of seems like it's a dreamy like state. And the son is asking, "Can we eat the turkey? Can we eat the food?" It doesn't feel like a death, but it's it is definitely a death. I mean, the whole thing doesn't feel so serious, but it is serious. And and um, the sorrowful woman ends up dying. And the son is left asking for turkey, and the father is is really sad, and and you know life is very bad because his wife just died, and the son just lost a mother. Um, so let's go into the analysis and the deeper meaning here. Um, uh, a sorrowful woman is is just packed full of information. First and foremost, uh, you know we're going to talk about the 20th century now. Again, this is a specific woman in the 20th century. This is not for all women. Um, in the 20th century, I mean, a, a lot of women worked. Um, a lot of women, especially after World War II, uh, a lot of women entered the workforce. A lot of women started to earn money for themselves and started to create their own businesses. Um, this woman, uh, a sorrowful woman, is kind of like a relic of the past because she is... Um, She's a white upper well upper middle class woman. Uh, we know that the family has money because the husband can afford uh, a nanny and also afford an extra room in the house. Uh, so that means that they have enough money to go around. Um, where it's kind of like you know we know that she's not gonna go out and get a work because it wasn't accepted maybe in the upper class in the upper class of the middle class at that time, and. Um, her life was just repetition, cook, clean, feed, um, and be a wife uh, day in and day out. And that just, it had no meaning, no purpose, and just, she just fell into depression. Um, but the thing is, like, I feel like for most people around the world, repetition is just, you're going to have to live a life of repetition. If you have a job, you know, everybody gets up in the morning, goes to work, comes home, I don't know watch a movie when you come home or do something fun maybe and then go to sleep and go back to work and you do that for 40 50 years then you retire and i don't know gaze at your house or you know tell the young whippersnappers to not step on your lawn i mean i i don't know like i guess because like for most people that's life you you you're born you go to school you graduate uh, get a job, get married, have kids, uh, take care of them. They grow up, they leave. You grow old, you retire, and then you go into your old age. And there's a few adventures here and there. And, you know, you try to do something to give your life meaning. But for the most part, we all live the same life, no matter what country or whatever, wherever, first world, third world, whatever. We all live a life of repetition where you get up in the morning, you work, you take care of your family, and then you go to sleep and you wash and repeat. Um, um, we we know that some people are okay with this. The nanny, the nanny that appears within the short story, she's she was okay with working and taking care of this kid and doing the wife. I mean, we see two people actually do the wife job. The husband does it quite well and the nanny does they, they do it quite well and they don't fall into depression um but at the same time i mean the nanny and the husband they do get the the freedom of feeling free of earning their own money of, of making their own rules 
but but the the sorrowful woman here she she is in the upper class the upper middle class she doesn't get to just go out and define herself she's she's a wife she's a mother she's her role in society is an ancient one and it's one that you know for her it wasn't fulfilling enough now that that most for most for most people this is not the reality today there's some women that would probably enjoy just being a stay-at-home mother and taking care of their kids and and you know being invested in their lives and trying to make their lives a success and taking care of their husband some women might enjoy that we can't just you know say um at a hundred percent that every woman hates being um a stay-at-home mother we, i mean even though you know we can't say that that that's the truth for every single woman in the world um i mean some men like being stay-at-home fathers that's a new thing or you know that could be um something that's been around for a long time it's just more popular in the in the the, the 21st century where some fathers are staying home to take care of uh, their kids and the mothers are going out into the working world and, and, and providing and being the breadwinners. Um, so the world has definitely changed today in, in the 21st century. I mean, we have a, a woman vice president. Uh, so women have definitely um, entered the working world, the political world and, and all types of worlds of you know finding fulfillment and and finding work and defining themselves however they want to um so if this short story kind of feels a little dated because women are not trapped um in just being a mother and 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 wife anymore i mean they can do that you can still be a stay-at-home mother but you don't have to be you definitely you know you don't have to be um, the other thing here is, I mean, the impact of these characters. Each character is just in a different world. The son, I mean, he doesn't seem to like go out crying and, and wailing and saying why his mom is behaving like this, but he's completely unaware of what's going on. He doesn't know why his mother is acting like this. He doesn't understand depression. I mean, at the end, he just wants to eat. Um, the father, he's very understanding. He's like a Superman-like figure. Um, he's like a Superman-like figure who just understands his wife and who just goes into action whenever his wife is not happy. And in the end, he gets repaid by finding a, a dead body at home. Um, now, I don't blame the husband. I don't blame the son. I don't blame the, the sorrowful woman here. I definitely understand uh, where she's coming from. She's coming from, you know, being in a world where... She has no purpose. She has no meaning to her life and she doesn't know what to do. Um, and so she isolates herself. And, you know, when she tries to step back into her former role, it ends up being too much for her. And the only way for her to escape is to die. And she dies. Um, so, yeah, that's a sorrowful woman. Now, it says a lot about the time um, and the, the role of women in the United States and in the upper middle class at that time. Um, now, does this is definitely, I would say, for Gail Godwin, um, according to Gail Godwin, by reading this short story, you can definitely say that um, there was probably a lot of women, upper middle class white women, who found themselves in this situation where... They kind of felt, uh, you know, unhappy and unsatisfied with life because the sum of their lives was, you know, were cooking, cleaning, and taking care of kids. Um, you know, it's, I mean, you could definitely understand why for some people that's just not enough. That's just not enough to keep on existing and to keep going. Um, I mean, but then again, I know a lot of people who would judge this sorrowful woman as, as kind of like she just had too much to to, to understand how lucky she was. Because, I mean, there's a lot of people who would find themselves lucky to have a husband. A lot of women who would find themselves lucky to have a husband who makes all the money. Um, and all you had to do is, I mean, I, there's definitely a lot of people who would judge a sorrowful woman and, and would even say that she has a problem. Um, especially in the 21st century, because 
she had money she had access to money she had a great husband she had a great home and she had a a playful son some women would would really go into judging this sorrowful woman and say you have nothing to be sorrowful uh, about uh, but again, different centuries, we're in the 21st century, that was the 20th century. And again, um, if you live the life long enough, um, you're bound to to find some type of um, unhappiness within it. Uh, you know, if you repeat something over and over and over and over again, even if you're a billionaire, a millionaire, whatever you are, uh, if you repeat something and over and over and over again, you can get used to it. Um, you might not feel happy anymore. Uh, I mean, the, the most richest people in the world, they're always going to enjoy their wealth. Uh, but, but when, if, when everything is easy for you, when everything is just, when there's no challenge for you in life and all you do is repetition day in and day out, um, it becomes meaningless. Um, and that's why sometimes I think like you find certain millionaires and extremely wealthy people um, go off the hinges because when everything is easy, there's no challenge, there's no competition, there's no rivalry, there's nothing to to make you want and desire and, and, and go after anything. When your life just becomes the mundane, there's no satisfaction in it. No matter how wealthy or poor you are, if there's nothing to challenge you, nothing to, to push you forward, and it just becomes boring and monotonous and, and, and there's no meaning in it, there, it tends to be, from my perspective at least, I feel like there's, it, 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 you turn to reach a place where there's no happiness and no enjoyment. Uh, yeah. Well, that's my perspective. That's my summary analysis of A Sorrowful Woman. Uh, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video.